In this video, I wanna break down Carlos Alcaraz's single strategy so you can start using the way he thinks about the court on the next time you play singles. So let's get started. Now, I broke up the way Carlos Alcaraz plays singles into four different phases. And if you understand these phases, then it doesn't take you being a strategy genius because I think a lot of his tactics that he's using isn't based on he's just this phenomenal tactical genius. And I think a lot of pros aren't thinking about how they're being phenomenal tactical geniuses where a lot of amateurs think they have to craft some like crazy game plan. A lot of what I think is going on is almost like a paint by number system that I wanna break down for you. The four phases that I think when you watch Carlos Alcaraz and start studying the way he plays, and a lot of pros is they have where they're trying to one, seize the middle. This is the most important real estate of the court. It's just like a chess terminology sees the middle where if you can control the middle of the chess board, you'll control more of the board and make your opponent have to react to you. The moment you can start controlling the middle of the court, it puts you in a huge advantage. Advantage number one is that you get to equally pick either side you wanna go to. And this can mean if the ball lands in the middle like you see Carlos doing, is running his opponent side to side without having to take a ton of risk. Number two is you can also choose whether you wanna just focus on your opponent's weakness if they do have a weakness. Now this isn't always the case. Like when he's playing Daniil Medvedev, Daniil doesn't really have a huge weakness from the baseline. He's a brick wall. But you can still see where if he has the choice from the middle of the court, he can choose to select to go to the forehand or the backhand without having to take a bunch of risks. Because when you seize the middle, you start to make your opponent try to play on the outside of the court. Which leads me to phase number two, which is defend, defend. Though what we see is, a lot of cross-court rallies. And what's happening is they're moving over here trying to defend the middle, meaning keeping their opponent out of the middle and their opponent's trying to keep them out of the middle. Now, a couple things happen when we think about defense. When we think about defending the middle and keeping the ball cross-court, now we just up the risk if your opponent wants to go down the line. And I'll talk about that in a second. Meaning that they have more court cross-court, which means this is a safer shot Hence, you're seeing more cross courts, and they have to really be selective because if they mess up with the timing and try to go down the line, they can miss it wide. Now, another great benefit of hitting really strong cross courts, and you see this a lot, is that you get a missed time ball that lands in the middle. And this is one of the biggest things I think you should start focusing on, and I start focusing on, is to focus on execution over strategic genius meaning that I'm trying to execute shots that land in a certain area over trying to trick my opponent. And it cuts down on one of the biggest areas where we make most of our mistakes, indecision. Because we're sitting here, should I do this, should I do that? And we do neither one because we make a mistake. Compared to knowing that this is where the ball lands, this is what I should do. The third phase is attacking. And this is where you see Carlos stepping inside the court and either attacking down the line because he can get his body weight behind it, or he creates more of an angle and runs his opponent off the court, creating more space for him to attack on the very next ball. And you can see how all these things are just paint by numbers. Now you might be saying, Kevin, but I see sometimes where they hit the spectacular shot. Well, here's the thing before I talk about the last phase that I identify when watching Carlos Alcaraz, is that most of us, including myself, should stick with these first three phases of controlling the middle, defending, and waiting for opportunities to attack when we're inside the court. And this fourth phase is what makes the pros the pros. And it's what I call advancing. This is when you see the pros turn a defensive situation into an offensive situation. They're taking more risks. This is where you see them change directions suddenly and go down the line. This is where you see them on the run and instead of going for the safer cross court or lifting the ball up to buy more time, they go for it and they make it. Now this is gonna happen at their level because at their level, just like you saw in this last Indian Wells, between Carlos Alcaraz and Daniil Medvedev, they're both rock solid. There's not a clear, distinct place to go to and say, if I do this, I'm gonna win points. So they're both at the edge of their game going, I have to take risk. I have to hit really excellent shots to win points. Most of us don't have to deal with a Daniil or a Carlos Alcaraz on the other side. If you do, I feel sorry for you. But most of us don't have to deal with that. Most of us can identify a weakness in your opponent, which means when you get that ball in the middle, start pounding that weakness and start honing your game on making sure your opponent has to beat you with their weakness, which is very tough. Now that you understand the four different phases, I wanna give you some patterns to start practicing in each one of these phases so you understand how you can go out and work on this. Because knowing is one thing, but executing is another. The other great benefit about knowing these phases is it's much easier to practice now. You're not going out and randomly practicing, you're going through what I call a play practice cycle. Meaning I play using the four phases and then I practice the things that I didn't do so well so the next time I go out I know exactly what I should practice, what I should be doing, and I know that I've improved because I know exactly that my cross courts are getting better 
deeper and more consistent, which leads to me controlling and seizing the middle, which means I can start focusing on hitting inside out forehands or just controlling the middle as it is. So let's get down to some drills. Now the very first drill we're gonna do is talking about seizing the middle. One of the most important parts about seizing the middle is making sure you feel comfortable when the ball comes in the middle, setting up your forehand generally and being able to hit both corners. Now when I'm saying hit both corners, meaning I can hit a cross court or inside out. Doesn't mean I need to get the ball close to the sideline. So I'm gonna set up the ball machine to feed the ball right down the middle and I'm gonna start in the middle. The very first thing I'm gonna to try to do is try to go forehand cross court, forehand inside out. This is a great drill to do consistently and work on just a little bit of footwork to move around. Because imagine if your opponent consistently hits the balls in the middle, you should run them. Now, I'll give you an extra tip on this. If you're playing somebody really fast and athletic, you don't necessarily wanna run them all the time. You might run them once or twice and then go behind them and use their speed against them. If you're playing somebody who's not so fast, you wanna run them. Cause you can tell like an athlete, like an Alcaraz, he loves running. All athletes love running. What they hate is when somebody wrong foots them and goes behind them. So that's a quick little tip you can have when you're thinking about controlling the middle. So now I've got the ball machine set up to practice. Moving the ball there, I'm coming back to the middle and here, and again, I'm not keeping the ball or hitting the ball close to the sideline. I'm just trying to make sure that if I have control of the middle of the court, I can keep my opponent running side to side. Okay, I'm not even trying to hit it super hard here. Placement, ooh, I missed that one. Do that one again. Placement is key here. Now, what you can also do is practice going here. And after I, I go one more here, what I would do is now mix it up and take this next one back behind my opponent. What that's gonna do is set you up for two different patterns, running your opponent side to side and tiring them out, or running them side to side and going behind them and taking advantage of you can wrong foot them. The second pattern we're gonna focus on is just a cross court, which means we're defending. Now two things we wanna focus on when defending. I focus mainly on going cross court, but there's another defensive shot you can hit that you see the pros use a lot of times. The first one is cross court deep, but the second one is middle deep. Sometimes when your opponent hits a great shot this deep and you don't have the time to place the ball exactly where you want, you see the pros try to hit the ball very deep and down the middle, pushing their opponent back and not giving them access to the entire court. The more you push back, the more the court closes off and you don't have the angles. So in this situation, I want you to practice first cross court. Now when we're thinking cross court, all we're thinking is getting the ball cross court and hopefully deep. Now, when we're thinking cross court, we don't wanna think super, let's say, close to the line like that because the more we get it close to the line, the more what happens is our opponent gets the possibility of hitting more of an angle. So if we can hit a nice heavy ball deep, even like that, which is not super close, that's what I wanna do. And the more you can practice shots like this, where you're just saying, can I hit four to five balls cross court without missing. Craig O'Shaughnessy has a stat which I absolutely love, which he breaks down, kind of points into three different categories. Zero through four, five through nine, and nine plus. 67% of the points are played zero through four. So you don't need to go out here and hit 30 million balls. You need to be solid with four balls. And those zero through four actually include the serve and return. So still, you don't need to be super consistent. You need to be super solid. Now, in the same position, I set the ball machine to feed the ball a little bit deeper. And this is where I'll hit the ball deep down the middle. I probably will hit the ball machine a couple of times trying to do this. And this is just a great safe play that if you're in trouble, instead of trying to force a shot to go a different direction, go ahead and hit it deep down the middle to push your opponent back. So if I have the ball machine hit it a little deeper, I'm boom, right on the ball machine. And all I'm focusing on is getting the ball deep. I'm a little off there. But by getting the ball, that's a great one. Ooh, but that's one where I'm in trouble. The wind took it. Ugh. And that's a great play because with this ball going deep down the middle, I'm hopefully pushing my opponent back, not giving them room or angles to hit. But also, I'm making sure since they don't have the angle, I don't have to run that much on the next ball. If you understand each phase, again, paint by numbers, it keeps you out of trouble. And the final phase is attack. Attack is where if the ball lands slightly short in the court, this is where we have two opportunities, to create more of an angle and open the court up, or attack down the line and close to the net. Now, Alcarez does a great job of attacking and moving forward. He's not afraid of the net. Now, one other attack that Alcarez does that I'll mention is a drop shot. You see this all the time, you're like, Kevin, how's that attack? 
Well, because he's done such a great job controlling the baseline, running his opponent, guess what his opponent generally does? They move away from the baseline to give themselves more time to hit shots. And because of that, it leaves the front of the court open, which he takes advantage of with a drop shot. Now, we're not gonna be practicing that today, but I just wanted to mention it so you understand exactly what's happening and how you can think about the court differently and even incorporate a drop shot if there's something in your game. So right now, we're gonna focus on attack. So I have the ball machine shut up short. I'm gonna run up. And when the ball comes, I'm gonna focus on going down the line. Not any bigger, because since I'm running up and going down the line here, it's gonna take time away from my opponent. And I'm just getting really good at running up and taking the ball early. The second shot you can work on when you're thinking about attacking is creating an angle or moving your opponent off the court. The ideal situation is where you get the ball, the pass by the single sideline before it goes past the baseline. You don't need a crazy angle, you're just trying to open up the court. Because if I can create an angle here and get them off the court, your opponent's kind of in a tough situation. If they go down the line, you can run them to the other side of the court, which is a huge play that you see Alcaraz do a lot of times. He takes advantage of the opponent going down the line and not hitting a great shot. He comes over, executes the backhand cross court. But if your opponent goes middle, you still have some room to maybe go cross court or go back behind them. Another thing is, you can still attack down the line. You can see how the, this angle has now exposed your opponent to a lot of different shots that they have to defend. And if they're not good at playing defense, this is a great opportunity to take advantage of them. So I set the ball machine up. So now when it fires out a ball, I can focus on creating an angle and bingo. That pass is pretty much where I wanted to go. That's pretty extreme. You don't need to create something like that. But if you can, oh, and this is why we want to practice it, to make those adjustments. Oh, there we go. And so if we can get a ball around there where it's passing the single sideline ah, before it passes the baseline, then it puts you yourself in a position to control the point. And this is really, if you can just go through these first three phases, it's gonna be a huge benefit to you. I wanna hear about the strategies that you see Alcaraz using and if you use these type of strategies on the court too. If you have a different type of strategy, leave it in the comments because I wanna do more videos on strategy like so many of you have asked for. So I hope to see you in another video, but if you wanna know more about strategy, make sure you check out this video, which talks about the four phases, which is crucial to understanding how to start beating more opponents in singles.